I guess the show is a lot about the shadow side of the root chakra. The root chakra is also known as the base chakra. It embodies earth energy and it, it's your primal instincts before you have any processed thinking about your emotions. You have a gut reaction. You also have animal instincts. And so this is a really grounded, rooted energy. All of a sudden there's such visceral fear. So what happens to us when the world is shaken up and what happens to us when our world's t turned upside down. And so that's really what the show is all about. It's all about us and how we interact with that energy. Flamenco really is a powerful energy. So flamenco is fine and good when we're strong and we feel well or we feel like warriors or we want to get scrappy and have a fight. And flamenco is really great at all of those really strong, resilient, brave emotions. And then I had a thought that it wasn't quite so good at interpreting more subtle qualities of humanity like sensitivity or vulnerability, weakness, anxiety, fear, um, panic. And so that's why I kind of took the show in a really contemporary way. I am working with two great uh, contemporary dancers. So Alvin Tolentino of Company Araska is dancing the part of Earth Serpent. And he represents a very primal, powerful, primordial energy that's of the earth. He's, he's me. <laughs> All the characters in the show are me and everything inside of me. And Rihanna Karogiannis, she um, has a lot of different dance backgrounds from ballet to contemporary to flamenco, but I had her in the capacity of inner child. So in Spanish, it's, she's called Niña Interior. <laughs> and in English, that would be inner child. And so Andriana has the great job of being the opposite of flamenco almost because we will, in fear, we will always revert to two issues. We'll try to gain power and control over our lives. And so in the state of a fear, panic situation, we'll try to recapture power and control. And so that character has none. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm thinking about that and I've been teaching her flamenco for years and years and all of a sudden I'm like, no, you have none of that. You have no strength, no power, no control. And so that was a kind of funny character because I think she had to come to grips with, oh yeah, so I can't be strong. Like I can't be powerful. So it was a very vulnerable character. It was me. It was all kind of about me, but I am the adult. I am the adults and the women and the person responsible for all this. I'm responsible for my reactions to things and situations. I'm also responsible for my inner child. So that whole piece with one shoe called confusion is all about um, taking responsibility. The shoes are symbolizing our sense of responsibility as adults and so in the number I take off one shoe and I just refuse. <laughs> I just sit back and I refuse to put my shoe on. I actually take it off, I kick it, I throw it around and um, this is really what we do. <laughs> we have temper tantrums and if I can just revert back to the pandemic, I had that. I'm sure everybody had that. I'm sure everybody had a good cry about it. And I'm sure everybody had a tantrum that they couldn't go into a rock concert or a show. Um, I think we've forgotten that al already. In 2023, it's almost like the pandemic didn't ever happen. But it did happen. And I remember when that happened, that was when the show was born. <laughs> In 2018, I um, just had a novel, wild idea to explore the use of red aerial silk fabric 
and see about this rotational device so the dancers can pull it and it can rotate 360 degrees around the stage. Um, I just had a curiosity about it, so I purchased one for about $500 US and off I went. Um, and it was really a huge struggle to wield the fabric because it didn't have any known techniques or known qualities. So I was just kind of learning on the fly, but it was really, really greatly received. I had um, support from the Shadbolt Centre and a residency and also the Dance Centre, the Roundhouse and everybody stepped up to support the, support the wild crazy idea. And then the pandemic happened and I had to actually stop everything and I had no idea how to really continue and I think we all kind of were shaken up in 2020 when that happened and we were told we had to stay home. And then I guess I had extra time so I actually wrote a couple of grant proposals to the BC Arts Council and the Canada Council who really, really generously funded all of the research and the investigation required to use, utilize three people dancing with the fabric. So I felt really supported and I kind of felt like the universe moved to allow me to do it. <laughs> but it actually did take all this time. I mean, it seems like five years seems like a long time, but actually on and off in pandemic times, it actually wasn't all that long. It is very typical in cuadro traditional flamenco to improvise almost full pieces. Um, so it's kind of a funny thing because like people in Vancouver and Canada know me to be a traditional cuadro flamenco dancer. I mean Vancouver has a very rich history of um, cuadro flamenco in the restaurant scene pre-pandemic times and uh, we're trained to learn many many songs in flamenco but within a specific structure we can do whatever we want so there's a handful of us in the city that are able to like just do a show tonight or tomorrow because we've had that many years of improvised training but it's all within a form and a structure so that form and structure was actually greatly abandoned in this show so the only number that we have a pure flamenco piece is actually the Alegria, which is the second number into it with my singer, Jafeline Houghton, and um, the guitarist, Josue Tacoronte. And even, like, we've probably rehearsed that about five times, running it through. Each time is slightly different, but we're quite accustomed to accepting that because it's a way to be in the moment. It's a way to communicate and have chemistry with each other in the moment. So we accept small differences in performances. But this show, um, it's largely mounted, but um, always leaving space. Um, I don't really like to have an extremely tight show because it disallows like an emotional engagement. So if there's an artist that wants to take a little bit more time, here or there, they certainly have the liberty to do so. That's really kind of the beauty of being able to do the show many, many times. I have to thank the Shadbolt Centre for allowing us a two-week residency to run the show every day for two weeks. It's been such a luxury with um, the lighting designer was a really critical element in this particular show. But yeah, like even the, the lighting designer didn't um, program exactly to specific times because he knew that, you know, it might be slightly different each time. So we were all on the fly a little bit, but I think the most improvised person the whole night, it was actually Josue, the guitarist, because he actually had to create the segues between each of the numbers. And honestly, it's been different every day for two weeks and incredible still. My guitarist, Josue Tacoronte, um, we have had many, many shows together since 2019. And it's actually taken me this long to realize what a wide palette range he actually has as a musician. So um, in this show, he plays classical music. 
he plays flamenco music, he plays contemporary music, and literally he's improvising almost every segue between each number in the dark, in the pitch black. He can't see his guitar. He just told us backstage, he's like, I can't see anything. I'm just, you know, I'm just feeling around. It's taken us a lot, many years actually, to conceive quite a few pieces. And he was one of the only ones that was also able to do soundscape at the same time. It's pretty hard to play guitar, but he has a djembe, he has a laptop computer with MP3 tracks that we've pre-recorded. Um, he has a wave drum, which has about 250 um, electronic settings and he also plays wood sticks and egg shaker. So that's all done with great coordination through the show. And I actually thought he did it before. Um, he's been the um, musical director of the National Cuban Flamenco Ballet before and also in Mexico. I thought that he just did it so naturally that he had experience and he just admitted a few days ago yeah, no, I've never done it before. And I said, what? <laughs> so I just thought it was just so funny that I, I had a musician that could drum at the same time as play all that guitar. It was quite amazing. I grew up as a Chinese kid here in the Lower Mainland. Um, I grew up in Burnaby and Vancouver, went to high school, went to UBC, and um, I mean, what can I say? I'm a, I'm a Chinese kid. My mom made me play violin lessons since I was four years old, all the way to the point I was 18 years old and told me that I couldn't study music in university because I was going to be poor. And I had to like do a, a business degree, degree instead, which I actually ended up doing and working um, out in um, marketing and sales and market research for many, many years before doing flamenco. But I bring a very um, disciplined um, musical background to the art of flamenco dance because I can pull from classical music um, and flamenco music genres and be able to communicate with the musician. I think that is a highly critical uh, for people mounting shows. I actually don't know how dancers would actually mount a show in flamenco without having a um, very strong musical background. And then, as I mentioned before, I actually have a business degree from um, the University of British Columbia, which was another life as well. But I do have organizational skills to manage the program and manage the product project timeline, you know. And so none of these skills really go to waste. I, I, I think I use it all. Um, and then I, I feel like, especially in Canada, I don't feel like um, being Chinese has hurt or hindered me in any way being a flamenco dancer. I, the first question I get from people usually is, um, have you experienced racism in flamenco? And uh, for the most part, no, I haven't. Um, in fact, people are really curious about it. They want to know why, <laughs> why am I, why am I Chinese Canadian and dancing flamenco? But I, I think I am flamenco. You're, you don't dance flamenco. You are or you're not flamenco. And uh, I feel that way. I feel like that fight is in me, and I feel like that expression is very clearly me. And um, really happy to have this experience to. Um, have an authentic expression in the art form and in a way I almost want to say that uh, the city and the community centers and the province and the country have gone way out of their way to actually support me to find this artistic expression and I, I can't say anything else except for thank you because it came in such a critical time because I think most of the artists were wondering what they were going to do in 2020 when there were no restaurants and no shows and nothing to do and I think it was really well supported so I just want to make everybody proud now. <laughs>